Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're out at the range with a Sig Cross bolt action rifle. This one's chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor. It came into Copper Custom as a new rifle. We snatched it, brought it out here to do some shooting with it because we've had a lot of requests to comment about this particular rifle. What is this rifle intended for? Well, it's intended for precision shooting and backcountry hunting. Why is it backcountry hunting? Uh, that's because the gun is relatively lightweight for your average bolt action rifle. But before we get into the meat and potatoes of today's video, folks, if you enjoy the content that we produce here on the Military Arms channel, please just take a brief moment to like, share, and subscribe to the channel, and also comment down below. We enjoy reading those comments. We try to respond when we can, and it really helps us out with the algorithms. With all that being said, let's get started with today's video and take a closer look at this rather interesting rifle. Have you guys heard of PrimaryArms.com? You may not know this, but they're the, one of the largest online retailers out there. They have an amazing selection of everything from firearms all the way to accessories, optics, slings, cleaning kits, anything you can think of, ammunition. They sell it at PrimaryArms.com. They have really good prices. I've shopped with them for many years. And even in times like this, when it's kind of hard to find things, they generally have a pretty good stock. There's no membership fees and they're helping to support us here at the Military Arms Channel. So when we need things for video production, they're gonna help us out in that regard, which helps us to make content for you. And all I ask is you guys swing by and check out primaryarms.com. The features of the SIG Cross are a little bit different. Now, there's another rifle on the market called the Q-Fix, and we'll talk about it in a future video. I have a 6.5 and a 308 uh, Q-Fix that I've been tinkering around with now for about a year. Uh, there's definitely a video due on that rifle, but we had a quick chance to grab this rifle from Copper to do some quick shooting with it, and for the last few days, we've been able to kind of ring it out and get an idea of what it's capable of. But before we get into the accuracy, let's talk about the rifle itself and some of the features that it has. Now, chassis rifles are all the rage. PRS is a very popular sport, and also people are looking for modern, lightweight, bolt-action rifles for hunting, not just for competition shooting. And people are also looking at rifles like this for long-range precision. Take my Delta V Pro, one of my favorite rifles, but that is a chassis rifle. It's capable of extreme precision, a 6.5 Creedmoor. But let's start from the rear of the rifle and kind of work our way forward and talk about the features of the SIG Cross. Back here we have our butt pad. This butt pad is adjustable, as is the cheek riser, but you just push a button here and you can slide the butt pad up and down to the desired height so you can get it right in the pocket of your shoulder, depending on what type of shooting you do, standing up from the prone position, from the sitting position, whatever. You can move this very quickly to get it right into that pocket of your shoulder. Also, on the stock, you have an adjustable cheek comb riser. Now this one's easily adjustable. You have a button right here by my index finger. And when you push that button in, it releases this throw lever, which you push down. And now it's under spring pressure, so it's gonna to wanna to shoot up to its full extension. You just kind of push it down to about where you want it, rotate this locking lever back underneath this locking tab, and now you've set your cheek riser height. You can also adjust the length of pull of the stock very simply by, uh, where is that little thing? It's right here. You just unscrew this. 
and then you can slide and it clicks this to whatever position you want it to to adjust that length of pull tighten that back down and it won't move when you fire the rifle so it's a very lightweight skeletonized aluminum stock have a folding stock capability to, to fold the stock you have a button here on top and you push on that button lift up on the stock and it will fold to the side of the rifle you'll notice the bolt handle goes right through the skeletonized stock it's a very positive locking stock it um, you, know, you got to push that button to release it so when it locks up there's no play in the stock whatsoever so that's definitely a good feature I've seen some stocks like this that wobble a little bit once they're uh, in their extended position moving forward we have a standard AR-15 type pistol grip here we have an AR-15 type selector we're going to come back and talk about this selector but there's an AR-15 tile style ambi selector lever moving forward we have an adjustable trigger this trigger can be adjusted by a, a simple screw and that's just underneath the receiver here and you can get at it through the hole that's cut through the trigger guard here and you can adjust it from two and a half pounds all the way up to four pounds and it is a two-stage trigger so you can adjust it to your preference some folks like heavier triggers other folks like really light triggers and 2.5 pounds is fairly light now we have a 60 degree throw bolt so there's your bolt in its upmost position and there's the throw it goes back and uh and locks into place to take the bolt out of the gun you have to fold the stock to the side there's a little button right here underneath the picatinny rail the scope's mounted to it's a little lever you push on that open your bolt up and draw it out to the rear you cannot do this with the stock in the fully extended position it has a three lug bolt with a simple claw extractor and a plunger much like an ar-15 type ejector this head is removable so that's part of the caliber change capabilities of the gun replace the bolt head you can go from 6.5 creedmoor to 308 winchester or to 277 fury in terms of calibers to put it back in line it up push that tab back in and your bolt goes back home the gun's not chassis gun the gun the, the entire receiver is one piece of machined aluminum so it's not an action setting into an aluminum chassis it's a one huge chunk of aluminum machined into a, a single unit now on top of it we have a 1913 rail that is user replaceable they have a zero moa and a 20 moa base that you can put on there so if you're going to shoot really really long range with this rifle you'll want to put a 20 moa base on it so that you have enough to, enough adjustment in your scope to get out to those distances to a thousand yards and beyond moving forward we have a simple jam nut that's holding the barrel in place the jam nut is user serviceable so again you can take the barrel off very easily yourself and change calibers to one of the three calibers i just mentioned the aluminum handguard is m-lock compatible as you can see the m-lock around 12 and 3 9 and 6 o'clock positions very minimalistic this rifle has an 18 inch stainless steel barrel has a one and eight twist in that barrel they don't give any more information on the sig website about it on the end of the barrel we have a 5 8 by 24 thread today we're running it with an oss silencer but we did shoot some groups without the can on just to see what the differences were the gun also makes use of aics magazines you have a magazine release just inside the trigger guard you push forward on that and the magazine drops out I believe the AICS magazine is probably the best precision rifle magazine on the market. It's a single stack, so you get consistent feeding. This is a five rounder, but you can also get 10 rounders. So those are the basic features of the SIG Cross rifle. The uh, MSRP on this thing, well, I'm not sure what the MSRP is, but I found it online for around $1,599, so about $1,600. Of course, that is not going to include the optic and scope, and it's definitely not going to include a suppressor. You're just going to get the base rifle with a single magazine, owner's manual, some swag, and stuff like that. So that's pretty much it in terms of the features of the SIG Cross. The SIG Cross is not without its issues. The internet has reported a number of different problems with the rifle, and probably the most prolific would be uh, the nut and fancy video where he discovered a hang fire situation with the trigger and it was incredibly unsafe and so sig stopped production and issued a recall 
if you have an early SIG cross rifle that's not um, post recall, you better contact SIG and get that trigger update because uh, the gun can fire unexpectedly, which is obviously is an extremely unsafe situation. So this gun is a post recall gun. This one just came into copper this last week. So we know that it's, it does have the trigger fix in it. Now, some of the stuff that we've noticed with the rifle is uh, a little less severe. First of all, the magazine, the AICS magazines, when you have them loaded, you'll put the magazine in the gun, you'll think it's in, and it'll even feel like it's, it's locked into place. You'll start shooting and fire that first round, the magazine will drop down, won't, won't feed that next round. That's because you really have to push this magazine in until you hear it click. Because if you don't hear it click, like right there, you think it's in because I really pushed on it, I have to push on even harder to get that click. Um, you can alleviate a little bit of that with the bolt to the rear, put the magazine in. Right there, it's, it's held in place, but it's not going to feed. It's going to drop out on that first round fired. Push harder again. It doesn't really alleviate much of it by opening the bolt, but it is a little bit easier. Go ahead and drop that out so we don't make an unsafe condition here. Another issue that we've seen with the rifle is that the accuracy is pretty much all over the place. And we'll discuss that more when we start showing you the groups that the rifle produces with the ammunition that we have out here. And this is all the 6.5 Creedmoor match that we could find to bring out here to do some accuracy testing. Yes, the barrel settled in, it has over 100 rounds through it. So uh, the accuracy issues that we're seeing uh, that we're gonna demonstrate for you guys um, aren't anything uh, that's, you know, be because of the gun being brand new out of the box. Another issue that I discovered, that Jason discovered as well, when he was shooting it, because he set the entire gun up before bringing it out and did some accuracy testing of his own, going to fire from safe is pretty easy. It's AR-15 style, select a lever. There isn't really a positive detent, but going back to safe, you'll flip it and you'll think it's on safe, but it's at half mass. You have to push it further to go into the actual safe position. So when you flip it to fire, It'll go there pretty easily. When you go back to flip it to safe, I just flipped it to what I would think would be safe on an AR-15. It's at half mass, gotta push it a little bit further. However, even at that half mass position, the gun will not fire. So, but it's just, uh, you know, a, just a hair off from being in the fire position. So you do wanna make sure that you have it completely on safe. Another thing we thought was kind of curious, typically with rifles like this, Companies will make accuracy guarantees. We can find no accuracy guarantee on the SIG website, and we can't find any accuracy guarantee in the SIG owner's manual. Take the DD5, or the, uh, I'm sorry, the Daniel Defense Delta 5 Pro that we recently did a video on. They have an accuracy guarantee on the gun. If it doesn't shoot to that potential, uh, using factory match ammunition, there's something wrong with the gun, they'll fix it for you. No claims that we can find for this particular rifle. And then the other issue that's really concerning that uh, is, is for me up there with the accuracy issues. And that's the fact that this bolt, when you're not loading around, moves very, very freely. It, it's a very slick moving bolt. The minute you start to load rounds, and it's not any particular brand. We've, we've experienced it with all the brands that we've had out here. And you, you go home, you push the bolt home on a live round and you start to pull the handle down and you either have to pull really, really hard or just kind of beat the handle down to get it to chamber. That's not right. Now, I don't know if that's just this rifle or if other crosses uh, have that problem. Now, I have had the opportunity to shoot a friend of mine's cross, and this was about a month ago. Uh, I was helping him set the rifle up. It was a new rifle. I was helping him get a scope set up, zeroed here, and the accuracy with the 308 was on par with what we've seen with the 6.5 Creedmoor. Less than impressive. Again, we'll get more into that here in the video. The magazine release can be a little bit stiff, but with practice, that's just, that's just a, a training issue. You can actually get the magazine out fairly quickly. So those are the kind of the negative issues that we've encountered with the SIG Cross so far. I also should mention that the weight of the rifle is right around seven pounds. It's gonna vary between the calibers because of the bore size. There's gonna be more or less material in the barrel. Uh, in the case of the 6.5 Creedmoor, it's gonna be a little bit heavier than, this, than the uh, 308. But you're looking at right around seven pounds on average for the SIG Cross.
So now you guys have seen the accuracy that we were getting out of the rifle from the video footage that we just showed you. So let's talk about the results. The first group of the day that I fired was with the Federal Gold Medal Match, which was 140 grain, and I got 0.6 of an inch. Yes, we're firing three shot groups, guys, because we are scraping the bottom of the barrel to get enough ammunition to conduct any type of accuracy testing for guns right now. We're gonna stick with three shot groups until ammunition becomes readily available again, then we'll go back to our standard five shot groups. So 0 0.6, that's, uh, I was like, wow, man, maybe this thing is gonna shoot well with the, uh, with the 140 grain stuff. So in no particular order, I'm just gonna work my way down here. Here we have Winchester 140 grain Supreme Match and three shot group of 1.1 inches. Over here, we have Hornaday and that's 147 grain ELD, some of the new stuff, um, you know, not too bad, 0.8 of an inch. Over here, we have um, the Winchester 140 grain match again, which is another 1.1 inch. This one was rather interesting. Um, we have, this is the one where we took the suppressor off. We wanted to see if the suppressor was gonna change the accuracy of the gun. It definitely changed the point of impact. Now, this is something that we rarely see with OSS suppressors. On every other gun I've put an OSS suppressor on, at a minimum, we've only seen about a one inch drop in terms of point of impact shift by putting the can on. We've never seen it do what it did here. So we took the can off and the first shot flew over here and this is with 140 grain federal gold medal match. Put the, um, we redoped the gun, confirmed zero, shot this group without the suppressor and this is the federal 140 grain gold medal match and it gave us a 1.3 inch group. So without a suppressor, with a suppressor. Here we have some Hornady 140 grain ELD, and this is a 1.2 inch group. Over here we have a federal gold medal match, 140 grain uh, with a suppressor. And um, we have to constantly readjust the dope when we shoot different flavors of ammo, which I'll talk about here in a moment. But we got a 1.3 inch group down here. We have the cross with the federal 140 grain uh, gold medal match. And this is with the suppressor 0.8 of an inch. So just under an inch. So one thing that we noticed when we were moving around between all the different flavors of ammunition that we, we fired, we could see up to one mil of difference in terms of point of impact versus point of aim at 100 yards. I don't typically see that out of precision rifles, at least none of the rifles that I've owned and shot with any regularity. So seeing that type of wild shift between match ammunitions using roughly the same bullet weight was something I didn't expect to see with the SIG Cross. Did some more shooting. And this time uh, we did this with the Bagara. I, I brought out my Bagara and fired a couple of groups with it. The Bagara really likes the 130 grain stuff, but this is a half inch group fired from the Bagara with the 140 grain federal gold medal match. And this is just so we can uh, have a baseline from a precision rifle that we know the performance of. Then I threw in some uh, federal gold medal match 130 grain stuff with Berger bullet. And out of the Bagara, we have a 0.2 inch three shot group. It's basically a, a one hole group. So we go back over to the SIG cross here. We have 130 grain uh, federal gold medal match Berger. And this is a 0 0.9 inch group. So just under one inch. Federal gold medal match, 130 grain Berger again, 1.7 inch. So we had two shots here, thought it was a really good group, and then we realized, nope, one was outside of the circle. So this type of stuff is what Jason was reporting when he called me. It's like, dude, this, this cross is all over the place. Every once in a while, we'll just throw that one wild shot. And here we see evidence of that here. So the accuracy of the gun for the amount of money isn't there. Now, if you're looking for a lightweight rifle, this is certainly relatively lightweight, tipping the scales right around seven pounds, but it's not a precision rifle. I, I do not consider this to be a precision rifle. I have AR-15s that shoot as good or better than this, and they're not considered precision guns. This is just an okay hunting rifle, and I would not feel, even though we haven't tested it with hunting ammunition, typically you lose accuracy with hunting ammunition. Uh, if it's a one inch gun with match ammo, it might be a one and a half inch or one and three quarter inch gun, sometimes a two inch gun with hunting ammo. So hunting out on the wide open plains out west with a gun like this 
in the back country. In that situation, I absolutely would not recommend this gun. I wouldn't recommend it for PRS. I don't believe it's accurate enough. Now, maybe with hand loads, you could work up a load that will, will actually, you know, settle the gun down and you might be able to get better performance out of it. But I'm not all that optimistic, especially reading the reports that I've read online about the gun from other owners. It's just not a precision rifle, but it's small, lightweight, handy for close range hunting, like around here in Indiana. You know, the furthest shot I would probably ever take on a deer, maybe it'd be 200 yards, usually right around 100 to 125 yards is what I've killed most of my deer at. So this thing would do just fine in that role. It's precise enough uh, to, to, to give her, a, 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 you know, an ethical kill at that range. But this isn't some long range rifle. When they say that this is a precision rifle, I'm gonna disagree with SIG on that one. So we're sitting around talking about this rifle and past SIG products that we've had uh, problems with, like the P365 and, and firearms like that. Even the M, uh, M17, which is the P320, had plenty of problems itself, if you remember the drop firing and things like that. SIG has a tendency to beta test firearms uh, with the shooting public, their, their customers and SIG may take the constructive criticism we're trying to offer here in this video and other criticisms that other users are experiencing and, uh, and maybe tweak it and make it more accurate down the road. And maybe not, maybe they'll just give up on it because there's no way to truly accurize this particular design and they'll drop it like they have so many other different SIG products. So it'll be interesting to see how this shakes out because SIG will either fix it, make it more accurate, leave it as is until sales peter off and they just drop it and all support like they have so many other times. It's hard to say, but um, I would feel pretty upset if I had purchased this rifle myself. I feel like this is me beta testing a gun for SIG once again. In front is my Bagara, and this is a B14 Wilderness. This gun's a little bit heavier, obviously, than the Cross. It's more traditional. However, this gun on a bad day shoots a half inch group. This gun, if it shoots a one inch group, there's something wrong with the shooter or there's something wrong with the ammunition. The gun is consistently a half minute gun and oftentimes we'll see groups like I showed you today that's 0.2 of an inch, basically same hole accuracy. And then again, it really likes that 130 grain Berger Federal Gold Medal Match stuff. So this gun comes to market at $899. I would be far more inclined to take this thing prairie dog hunting, big game hunting, any type of hunting where distance is involved. That's not the case with the SIG Cross. The SIG Cross, even though the SIG website says they consulted with military snipers and hunters from around the world and all sorts of stuff to come up with the ultimate hunting backwoods gun, I think what they came up with is a really cool looking gun. Uh, and I don't know who copied who, obviously that's the 800 pound <laughs> elephant in the room. You know, there is the Q-Fix floating around out there, and then there is the SIG Cross, and I don't know who copied who, but it is pretty much very similar to that, that Fix rifle. And again, we'll do a video on the Fix rifle. But this gun is, you know, modestly priced at around $1,599. I don't think it's a good value at that price. Uh, the 6.5 Creedmoor that we've shot and the little experience I had with the 308 version got consistent results. When I do searches on the internet, I'm finding people talking about similar accuracy. And I can't call a one inch gun a precision rifle. It just simply isn't. So if you're looking for a hunting rifle, I would not recommend the SIG Cross. If you're looking for something that's fun and different and 1600 bucks is, you know, pocket change to you, check it out. I mean, you can change calibers with it and perhaps there are crosses out there that are sub minute. I've just never been able to find one or shoot one. And I do a lot of precision rifle shooting. Uh, it, it's just not something that, that flips my switch. I, I think SIG missed the boat. There's so much potential with this design given its free float barrel and things like that. I'm really not sure where the problem is with the accuracy. Now, maybe SIG uh, is hoping that companies like Proof Research come out with barrels for this thing because it is user serviceable. You can change the barrel out yourself. Maybe a proof barrel would increase the accuracy of this, or perhaps there's something in the, the bolt mechanism itself. It's just not trued and, and, and faced properly. I don't know. I'm not a machinist. All I can do is I'm a trigger puller, not a trigger designer, and the gun just doesn't shoot to my expectations, especially for the price. When I can go out and buy a Bagara, for a fraction of the price and get twice the accuracy. 
So I look forward to your comments down below. Guys, if you're a SIG Cross owner, please post your results down below. Let me know how your rifle's shooting for you. All I have is this one test sample and brief experience with the 308 version, and I've seen consistent um, less than stellar performance out of both of those rifles. So I look forward to hearing from those guys and gals out there that may be shooting this rifle and having better luck with it. And if you're doing that, are you using, you know, reloads? Are you using a particular flavor of factory ammunition? All that stuff I would love to hear about because we learn just as much from you as you might learn from our videos. All right, guys, that's it for today in the SIG Cross. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel so we can continue to bring you content like this, please consider becoming part of our Patreon family. Just follow the link in the video description down below. You get access to blog posts, direct access to me. I answer all private communications. And we have a really cool online community there. Again, Patreon, link down in the video description below. Also, uh, please take a moment to click that little join button underneath the video player you're watching right now. You can support us right here on YouTube. So give that little button a click, check out some of the incentives, and consider supporting us here on YouTube. And last but not least, guys, please swing by and check out coppercustom.com. Thank you guys for 13 years of support. We greatly appreciate it. We'll talk to you guys soon.